Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. The school bus budget was really overfunded here. Imagine a post-apocalyptic world. On the river. Stopping your raft to craft, scavenge supplies and hunt. Braving the wilds, rapids and the leftovers of quaint small towns. Equipped with canine companion Aesop. Or maybe Daisy. But they're not that useful though. Firstly, they don't attack predators. They bark when there's something of value for you to collect, but that's less useful if they bark at seemingly nothing at all. But you very rarely meet people in this world, so having a pet is nice. Make you feel a bit less lonely. It seems as though you were a scout. And this world is going to put your training to the test. You will need food, water, shelter, medical attention, and warmth. A scouts are trained in a lot of different things. And you play as someone who has earned their raft customization badge. But in all fairness, you do collect raft schematics to help you in that task. Firstly, the visuals are nice. A sort of cartoony caricature of rural riverland. <coughs> rural riverland. I really must apologize, that really didn't improve how it sounded much. It just took away the slight Scottish tinge. While the game does have its cartoony moments, it seems more inclined towards a realistic take. Or at the very least, a lush dark one. Your character's eye white is black. Beautiful, but at times it can come across as a bit grimy. And also, the areas are quite small and procedurally generated. So fairly soon into the game, areas are going to start looking alike. Even in terms of map layout. At least partially. Sometimes completely. Annoyingly so, but at the very least it gives you a nice quaint feeling. A small town atmosphere delivered compactly. Pocket wildernesses. At a fairly fixed isometric angle. I love it, but if you don't slow down some, you will run into critters. But you might not want to slow down because time is of the essence. And night is when the wolves come out. So ideally you'll clean out an area before then. All while keeping your fatigue, hunger and thirst in check. And when you're ready, get back on the raft and brave the river. And then another threat gets thrown your way. The longer you journey, the colder it gets. So instead of armor upgrades, this game has you making thicker and thicker clothing. To heat your body and help you survive. And that requires better quality hide. So, you'll need to kill a few things, before the cold becomes too much and you lose a toe. This game has quite a rushed feeling, but in a good way. This world is so small and compact, it doesn't really feel like you're missing out on anything. And unlike most survival games, you don't build and craft your own magnum opus of a base. So the focus falls on completing the journey quickly. No use dilly-dallying, the world's dangerous and there's very little reason to stay put. And besides, it feels less rushed on the river. Especially on parts of the river where there are no places to dock. You just dodging rocks, narrowly grabbing the contents of a shopping cart, speeding along the rapids. It's quite a fun action minigame. That actually comprises a lot of the game. It complements the scavenging and crafting segments quite nicely. It calms you down, even if getting to grips with the movement of the raft takes time. The hunting is fun too, but the action is very indirect. You place traps and you lead animals into them. Or you can use a bow, but that forces you to stand still and aim. It takes quite a bit of time to line up that shot. And while I do like the interface when things are calm, when something's attacking you, it doesn't pause and some items are not the easiest to quick select. I personally found that the best way to deal with wolves is to throw some poisoned meat at them. Quite effective, but usually I had to run away from critters and exploit their inability to come close to the entrance of an area, yet they'd still gladly eat that poisoned meat you throw at them. So arguably there are areas that are a bit unrefined. And there's quite a bit of incentive to use one of those areas to combat the other. But hey, I didn't really put much effort into properly learning how to assign quick slots. Maybe my meat tossing ability would improve if I did. The resource management and crafting are also good, but it never gets that complex. Nothing ever gets that difficult to make. 
clothing and raft mods are essentially the only things that upgrade. And the raft upgrades only require free base materials. Nuts and bolts, lumber and schematics. And I feel like having all of the raft upgrades happen pretty early game for me. Everything else you craft helps you survive the day to day. Food, medicine, arrows. Sure, you have to improve your tools to craft some stuff, but only once. From stone to actual metal. Once you have warm enough clothing and enough supplies, you can pretty much speed down the river to your objective. Not stopping until you need to eat, drink or sleep. There are one or two mandatory stops, but they are rare and part of the story. Once you're prepared enough, you can just ride it out till you're safe. If I had known how close I was to the end, I probably wouldn't have bothered collecting as much of the stuff as I did. Who needs this much alcohol? <sighs> Insert your own joke here. Well, it's good to be prepared. Story-wise, there isn't a lot. Quest descriptions and some strange people you meet now and then. People who have made peace with their situation, but are still cordial and helpful to the player. With a few lines of dialogue each. The odd mandatory stop, as well as one or two main missions, that essentially translate to get further down the river. And lastly, quilts. Made by a storyteller telling the stories of those left behind. Actually, most of them seemingly chose to stay. Probably because of their stereotypically stubborn characterizations. But in spite of that, it comes across as touching. But in all fairness, if you take all of that text and arrange it in succession, it probably won't take you more than a few minutes to read. Another emotionally affecting part of the game is the country-ish... Rock-ish... Folk-ish... Soundtrack. Lovely. At first I wasn't sure about the tracks with vocals in them. Just me stereotyping music with vocals in games, as automatically being second stringers, and thus they were available. But they really grew on me. Plus there's a cool mechanic that every time you craft something, a few notes of one of the main themes are strummed. The more you craft, the more you play. The game took me about 11 hours to complete, which is quite short for a survival game. It's a very straightforward example of the genre, at least those with crafting elements. The game is cheap on Steam, 159 Rand full price, 23 Rand 85 on sale. That's 2 Rand 17 per hour of gameplay, which is quite good. And it's an okay download. Not great, but okay at 2,606 megabytes on the hard drive. And it does work on the Warhorse barely. It lagged ferociously. Consistently. So to play it properly, you will need something better than the Warhorse. Hopefully nothing that much better. And I suppose it's not that kid-friendly. Bunnies get snared, and boars get impaled. Not that bad, but I suppose it's grim survival. But it's animal based, so maybe you can justify it as a sort of documentary-like violence. A grimness that's okay for kids. The game has good music, that's quite touching in this context. It adds emotional heft. Accompanies the river well. It's kind of folksy, rocky, country-y. The visuals are good too. Unique, dark and cute. Kind of cartoony. A fun yet realistically grim take on the wilds. And I suppose that using this kind of riverland in games is kind of rare. But in all fairness, at times the visuals can look a bit grimy. The game has a unique setting and those lovely compact maps. And it's also quite unique for a survival game. It's short, sweet, fairly linear, straightforward. And the indirect action is kind of rare in general. Clothing warmness is a rare mechanic, but while this gameplay is fairly unique, it's not for everybody. But when you're surviving, it is quite fun. On the maybe side, the game doesn't have much story. Almost none, really, but there are touching moments. Also, it's not that difficult a game. Sure, these wolves are hungry, but once you realize that wolves usually come out at night, and then just avoid the night, 
it gets easier. On the con side, the maps do get quite repetitive. Fairly early on, really. There really isn't that much to the game's procedural generation. And also, arguably, the game is a bit unrefined. At the very least, it's quite difficult to kill animals. And because of that, it's very tempting to use their inability to come towards the entrance to kill them easily. So, because of that indirect difficult combat, it's very difficult not to exploit one of the unrefinements as a mechanic. It's a good game, come on, play it. It's kind of like a future reboot of Tom Sawyer. Or Huck Finn? Which one's the one of the raft? Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip.